The subject of this video is off-road trailers. If you have a general interest in or are considering purchasing an off-road trailer, you're going to want to watch this video. Welcome to Muddy Ruts Overlanding. In this video, I'll tell you why I decided to purchase an off-road trailer for overlanding, why with all the available models and configurations and off-road trailers I chose an X-Venture XV3, I will also show you my trailer and the options I ordered with it and the mods I made to it after I purchased it. And I'm not being paid by X-Venture or Shit Industries to make this video about this trailer. I'm simply sharing my opinions and letting you know about my experiences with this trailer. Have you ever wished you could carry more gear on your overlanding trips? Or maybe you want to take multiple family members. You have a big family. Maybe you like making great meals. So you want to bring a barbecue grill, a stove, maybe even a pizza oven. Maybe a fire pit, gas or wood, or maybe both. Or maybe like me, you have a significant other that you want to make sure they're comfortable enough that they don't mind going with you on overlanding trips and they can enjoy themselves. Bringing along a, a nice privacy shelter with a clean toilet for them to use, a great place to sleep that's real comfortable, or maybe even a shower with hot water because some people don't want to be on the road for four or five days without taking a shower. If you have the right off-road trailer, you can do all that. A well-outfitted overland vehicle can easily exceed its gross vehicle weight rating, the GVWR. You'll find that on a sticker on the inside of your driver's side door. Exceeding your GVWR can make your vehicle unsafe to drive, cause greater wear and tear on the parts on your vehicle, and possibly if you were to have an accident, and they could prove that you were over GVWR, you might end up in a situation where you're, you're negligent. And you could possibly be found negligent should you have an accident and they find it's related to the extra weight that your vehicle is carrying. Prior to getting our Jeep, we camped in a semi-modified diesel ProMaster van. And in that van, I had no problem carrying all the gear I wanted to. The van was great. But as we became more adventurous and wanted to go more places off the beaten path, we realized the van was just not going to get us to places that required traversing rough terrain, and that's when we decided to buy the Jeep. We bought a Jeep Wrangler Willys Eco Diesel. The diesel option itself added three to 400 pounds to the weight of the vehicle. And I added steel bumpers, a winch, a tailgate table, a metal tray behind the back seat, a roof rack. I removed the back seat, saving about 100 pounds, loaded the Jeep as if I was going on a trip, and took it down to the truck scale and found out that the Jeep was very, very heavy. And this was before I added a rooftop tent to the Jeep. We were still using our ground tent. The axles on the Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel are rated at 3,100 pounds apiece. And my rig, with all the mods I made to it, and putting all the gear I wanted to take on a trip inside ended up being a little bit over the 6,200 pounds that you could carry on both axles. My rig was overloaded. I was in the position where I had to decide what I absolutely had to bring with me, what I wanted to, and what I could not bring. I had to decide what gear was absolutely necessary and what gear I could leave at home. I had already been considering purchasing an off-road trailer not because I needed to disperse some weight from the Jeep to an off-road trailer, but because I just generally thought they were pretty cool. I thought it would be great to have an off-road trailer, but now knowing that the vehicle was overweight with the gear I wanted to bring, the search was on. I was serious about getting an off-road trailer. My mind was made up and the search began. It might seem obvious, but the first thing to consider when you're buying an off-road trailer or any trailer for that matter, is the rated towing capacity of your tow vehicle. My Jeep is rated at 3,500 pounds towing capacity. So I can tow a trailer that weighs 3,500 pounds. And I, my preference is to stay well under that. I like to have a big safety margin if I'm towing. It's fully loaded with all the gear I wanted to bring on my overlanding trips. I wanted it to be no more than 2,000 pounds. So with a rated capacity of 3,500 pounds on my Jeep, and no more than 2,000 pounds trailer and gear, I'd have a very wide safety margin. 
The other thing I was thinking about, and I'm not sure about this, but it's just my own personal opinion, is that when you're towing off-road, you're really your effective towing capacity of your vehicle is probably a lot less than what it says. Towing over the road, uh, obviously, it's going to be a lot smoother ride, a lot less friction. You're not going to be climbing over obstacles. Off-road, you're going to be doing that. So it wouldn't hurt to stay under the tow rated towing capacity for your vehicle. And just as a general note, it's really always a good idea to purchase your tow vehicle before you buy any trailer. That way you don't end up with a trailer that's too big for the vehicle you have. If you're finding value in this video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe and help me grow this channel. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. When it comes to smaller off-road trailers, there's basically two types. There's a teardrop trailer, and the teardrops are like the small capsule you'll see where you open a door, you can climb right inside, a little cabin on wheels. And then there's trailers like this, which is a utility trailer. The teardrop trailers are great. You simply open the door, jump in, and you're ready to go to bed. Also, they, a lot of times they'll have a, a hatch in the back you open up, and your kitchen's ready to go. That makes it very convenient. You can duck in out of the weather real quick. Since my goal was moving gear from my Jeep into a trailer to take the load off my Jeep, a utility trailer is what made sense for me. I realized I could get that same level of convenience with a utility trailer by adding a rooftop tent to it, but I would also have the versatility that you get with a utility trailer. I could go camping one day in my utility trailer. Next day I could haul building materials. Next day I could throw a couple motorcycles in and head to my local OHV park. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video and contact information if you're interested in an X-Venture trailer, check their website and call Tim at X-Venture Trailer. They also make, and this is an XV3, they also make an XV2, which is a little larger, has some different options. And then they make another trailer, which you have to go to their website to see, that actually is a whole different kind of trailer. And I won't try to describe it, but go there and check it out. It's actually super cool. And my suggestion, that if you do buy an X-Venture trailer, that you pick it up in Clintonville so you get to see the beautiful town of Clintonville and you get to meet some of the folks that actually built your trailer. After doing all the research, I realized the X-Venture trailers were probably the best trailer made. If they're not the best, there's definitely none that are any better. And let me give you a few reasons why I believe that. My top reason for buying this X-Venture trailer is that it's 100% made in the USA in Clintonville, Wisconsin. The second most important reason for choosing the X-Venture trailer was that I knew that the X-Venture trailer is built by Shut Industries, which has been making trailers for the military for many, many years. And all the good things, all the good engineering, and all the good expertise that goes into making their military trailers is right here in this civilian trailer. Another reason for buying the X-Venture XV3 was the 10-year warranty. If they're going to give me a 10-year warranty on the chassis of this trailer, I know they're really standing behind and they believe in their product. This trailer is 100% fabricated out of aluminum. Aluminum tubing for the chassis and aluminum sheets for the, the body of the trailer. One thing that Shut Industries has learned is that when you assemble an aluminum trailer, the best way to do it is using what they call a huck bolt. And a huck bolt is a, like a big rivet that comes from the company Alcoa, the aluminum company. And that allows the trailer, when you're going off road, it's vibrating. It allows a little bit of movement everywhere in the trailer, in the parts. If you were to weld an aluminum trailer together, you would find out that after going off road for many years, the welds are going to fatigue and crack. And that's not going to happen with this X-Venture trailer. And that's one of the reasons that they can give you a 10-year warranty on the chassis. So I'm big on safety. And one of the things about the X-Venture trailer, and I haven't noticed it on a lot of American-made trailers, but they put a handbrake on each wheel. So when you park your trailer, set it up, you're going to chalk the wheels. But in this case, on these trailers, 
you're also going to put a handbrake on on each wheel and the other thing you can do is when you have a handbrake for each wheel if you want to spin your trailer by hand you can set one brake and then spin the trailer around to maneuver it or position it exactly the way you want it this trailer is almost infinitely customizable whatever you think of whatever particular need you have you can customize this trailer to accommodate whatever you're going to use your trailer for for instance I put this bike rack on here this is where I wanted my bike rack this is what worked out for me I customize it like this no problem with the X-Venture XV3 Shet Industries also takes these X-Venture trailers to the same proving grounds they take their military trailers to to give them a thorough testing now I'll do a little walk around of my X-Venture XV3 trailer show you some of the mods that came on it from the factory and I'll show you some of the mods that I put on it after I bought it. X-Venture trailers are equipped with a Dexter solid torsion axle and electric trailer brakes. Parts like bearings and new brake pads are available for these axles everywhere as they are one of the most common axles used on RVs. Each wheel on the trailer is equipped with its own handbrake because you don't want your trailer rolling away when you're sleeping in your rooftop tent at night. They also allow for easy maneuvering of the trailer by locking one handbrake and then giving it a spin. It's an awesome safety feature on the trailer. X-Venture also includes an articulating hitch that allows your trailer to move independently of your tow vehicle off-road. Use the link above to see my articulating hitch video. Also included on the trailer is this ARC 750 series heavy-duty extreme off-road jockey wheel. It's an extremely stout jockey wheel and it's very well bolted onto the trailer tongue. On the back of the trailer on either side are crank down stabilizing jacks that keep you from rocking and rolling when you're up in the rooftop tent. The Truxedo roll up tano cover is an option I got on my trailer. It protects your gear when you're driving when you're going off road and you can, you can load 400 pounds on it spread out evenly across the top of the tannel cover. Power system on the trailer is recharged by the vehicle through the seven pin connector. You can easily plug in a solar panel. The switches are all fused and protected from damage. I got one battery, but you can't get two. The majority of the wiring runs through the aluminum tubes of the chassis to protect it and there are 12 volt chargers in the back of the trailer if you want to run a fridge. There's Deutsch electrical connectors all around the trailer. That way you can add your own lights very easily if you didn't order them from the factory. Here are some examples of the hook bolts and the thick aluminum plates and angles that are used to hold the chassis together. Here you can see the roof rack that comes with the trailer and some of my mods. I added a bike rack, jerry can holders on either side for water and diesel, and a fire extinguisher mount. I also added Unistrut to support the middle of the rooftop tent and also support the bike rack. You can also see on the back corner of the trailer my backup light that I installed. It was very easy to install because the wiring's all there and it just used Deutsch connectors that are your standard automotive connectors to connect every, all the wiring. 
I've added one light to the roof rack and I'm gonna add three more, one on each post, as soon as I get a chance. Here's my extra diesel can and that has come in handy quite a few times. The swing out gate has a massive hinge that has no problem at all supporting that heavy tailgate. When you swing out the tailgate, you'll see a beautiful stainless steel pop-up table that's standard on every XV3 trailer. And this table comes in very handy for roadside snacks or even around the camp. I installed rib nuts in the trailer rails so I could install these threaded eye bolts. Those I use for lashing gear down on top of the Truxedo panel. The fenders double as steps and can easily support a full grown man. I got the toolbox option on the front of the trailer, but there's also a slide out kitchen option that's just totally awesome. The spare tire carrier was an option and when I got it, put it on myself, it was just an absolutely beautiful piece of aluminum. Definitely check out the X-Venture website. They have a lot of great videos of the trailers being made, uh, being built, and the military trailers being built. And it's pretty interesting, even if you're not in the market for a trailer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.